hearts to give away No words to spread No song to say I felt the judge of the ordinary day I just called to say I love you I just called to say how much I care I just called to say I love you and I'm leaning from the bottom of my heart of my heart leaning from my heart Hi guys, it's been a while um, oh, it's, it's just been a weird season, a season where the Lord's pulling me back and really, um, really kind of honing me for this next level, whatever the next level is in ministry. Um, anyway, today he has got me saying something very simple simple um i was thinking of um what's going on in the world and i was re-watching some of my uh, earlier jo george floyd post not george floyd but interviews uh, i posted about four interviews I posted the one with John Gray and Stephen Furtick. I posted the one with Joel Olstein and John Gray. I posted um, the one with T.D. Jakes, Carl Wins. I, I posted the one with uh, Carl Wins and, and T.D. Jakes and a whole bunch of other um, white pastors and teachers and preachers um, and I posted the one with um, Dr. Anita um, I forget her last name well Dr. Anita and um, Christine Kane um, who was also in that T.D. Jakes one, by the way. And all those posts were about racism and the whole thing that was going on in the States. And I believe, um, I spoke, um, to my opinion with that. And today's, um, sermon is not really about that. It, it, as I began to watch some of these old posts and I began to think of some of our leaders and the leader in the U.S. and Canada and around the world, not only Do Donald Trump, but our um, or Justin Trudeau, but just leaders in anything, leaders in commerce, leaders in families, leaders in cities. I began, we're so quick as a society, when leaders fail, we jump all over them. And we say, oh my God, how can they do that? Oh my God, how can they operate like that? Why don't they operate with integrity? I know many of you have heard of the scandal that's going on with our leaders, with our leader, 
on Justin Trudeau in Canada. And as I sat back and thought about what's going on with him and what's going on with Donald Trump and what's going on with um, all those people, all our leaders, whether families or commerce or commerce or what have you, whatever leader you are, because um, my former pastor used to say, um, everyone's a leader in their own right. Everyone needs something. Um, a leader is somebody who influences people. You're not a leader unless you have people following you, genuinely following you, not just Facebook following you. And I was thinking of, um, or not just Twitter following you or Facebook friending you, but it's a genuine, it's a genuine following where people look up to you and um, really glean from what you say and how you live your life. And I was thinking of um, Justin, Stru Justin Trudeau and um, Rob Ford and um, all, Donald Trump and all these leaders. Um, and I thought, what would happen if instead of we just jumping on them. I'm not saying what they do is not wrong or they shouldn't be held accountable or they shouldn't walk with integrity. I, I believe that. I believe that wholeheartedly. But at the same time, I, I was wondering if instead of jumping on them and saying, ooh, and and get our hackles all in a twist and start saying, we should do this, they should have done that, they should never have done that. What would happen if we just loved them? If we just not only prayed for them, but, write, but covered them in prayer and covered them in our loves? in our love and um, like wrote to our politicians and wrote to our leaders and wrote to our pastors not with judgment but with love. A lot of people think that love is this hairy fairy thing like oh I love you and it's so fuzzy and whatever but no there, there is a reason why uh, Jesus said the first commandment is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second commandment is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. There's, there's, there's a reason why God said love is um, love is way up there because it's not a weak thing. It's a, it's a very strong thing. Love can cover a multitude of sins. Love doesn't exclude, exclude, excuse rather sin. It covers sin, which means it's like a blanket. It covers you until you are restored to your original pur purpose and whatever. You know, a lot of people, when they make mistakes, already um, beat themselves up. They already know that they're wrong. They already know that they are um, at fault. And by us judging them, especially if they're leaders or pastors, it's not helping. It's just reaffirming what the devil is trying to do in, in their lives, saying that they're no good, saying that they they can't lead because um, 
they they did this one thing or whatever. But but what we un but what we have to understand is love is strong. Love builds bridges. There's a when I was watching the Stephen Furtick, uh, John Gray, uh, interview. It was called. Um, uh, something about um, um, being the bridge, and I, and I began to think of that song. Uh, Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time? Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build. Don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time? You know, what I think the key to racism is, yes, there is all kinds of social justice issues. Yes, we need to stand up for each other. We need to stand together, white and black and all that. Yes, we need to... Uh, demands more from our politicians, complete transparency, transparency and all that. But I think the key to um, getting rid of racism is simply the God kind of love. Not the hairy fairy kind of love that we say, Oh, we love you. It's okay. No, real love is strong. It's the strongest thing that we could. Ever, it's the strongest tool that we could ever ever use to restore a person. Love restores. Love heals. Love forgives. Love doesn't excuse. But, as I said before, it covers. And if we would love people the way God would love people, all that stuff, all that prison reform, all that whole thing, would, would be so simple. Not that it would be so simple, but we would have... Um, the unction to do that because real love real love it it doesn't it doesn't only it doesn't only um come a multitude of sin it restores people to to what they are meant to be and hate destroys people we've lived in hate for too long and sometimes hate is overt and sometimes it's covert but the covert kind of hate is more sinister because the overt kind of hate people if I say, oh my gosh, I don't like you or I hate you, that's over. That's coming out and that's saying whatever. But when it's covert, when it's, um, they use a nice term, systemic racism. I really think it is, it is, um, it is hate in disguise. And we don't even notice 
it's hate in disguise because it didn't start with us. It started um, with um, s slavery in the States and it kind of trickled down and the more and the more aware we got that overt racism wasn't to be tolerated, the more covert we got with hate, the more secretive we got with hate. So in, instead of having um, slaves work in the fields and beating them, when they were emancipated in the States, uh, we just said, okay, you can live, um, but we won't give you tools, we won't give you anything. In fact, we'll separate you. And when we couldn't separate you, when they said, okay, you've got to um, bring them together, we can't separate them anymore, um, we said, okay, they can't se we can't separate them but we can, we can surely um, give, give them different rates for their credit, car, their credit cards or we can reject their credit score even though we, we gave a white person with the exact same credit score a car we can deny them because um, they're dark skin or they're Latino or they're black. So racism, uh, in my mind, didn't go away. It just changed forms. And because it changed forms, uh, sometimes people have racial biases and they don't even know why. They don't even know that they have them. They don't even know. Um, some people do know. Some people are straight up racist, but more often than not, they don't even know that they're racist. If you were, if you were going to ask them if they're racist, they would say, no, I don't care if people are white, black, purple, whatever, but watch them, how they, how they react when a large black man comes in, into a store. Do they clutch their purse more? Do they look away? or watch them when a Latina comes into a store, or a Chinese person comes into a store, or a Muslim person, and watch how they talk about um, certain people. Um, and it is so insidious. It is so uh, cunning, like a serpent like Genesis, uh, where the Bible says the, ser serpent, the serpent was the most cunning person, uh, not person, cunning animal on the earth. Racism or discrimination is so much like that. And it doesn't only come in color. It comes, uh, it doesn't, you, it doesn't only come with color. It comes with being a woman. It comes with having a disability. It comes with being a Christian. It comes with being a Muslim. Anything different you are, you'll have to face some kind of ism, whether it be sexism, ableism, uh, wh whatever ism you'll have to face and going back to love when you can look past your isms whatever they are and ask God what they are and how you can get rid of them 
when you can get down to the bottom of your isms, when you can drop those isms and say, Lord, I have this issue, but I don't know what to do about it. When you can be honest and say, yeah, I'm, I'm white and I clutch my purse uh, when a black man comes into a sto store. It's not that I mean to, but it's just reactive. It's what I've always done. Um, when you can get down to the bottom of who you really are, that's when you can change when you can admit you're ugly. When I say you're ugly, I mean, I don't mean your features. I mean the ugliness inside of you. When you can admit the, you're ugly, the, the ugly parts of yourself, that's when you can deal with them. And when you deal with them, that's when the real love can shine through. The reason why we think love is so weak is that because we never experienced the strong part of love. We've always seen the Hallmark romantic movie, oh, I love you kind of love. But we've never seen the hard, tough, I'm not letting you go kind of love, the Jacob wrestling with the angel kind of love, the Jesus dying on the cross kind of love. We've never seen that. And when we can ask God to give us that kind of heart for people, to give us not the weak kind of love, oh, you can do whatever you want, walk all over me kind of love, the strong, I'm never letting you, I'm never letting letting you go kind of love will shine through or the strong love that operates in wisdom and knowledge it's like a w woman in a bad relationship she'll say oh i love him but that's the weak kind of love the strong kind of love says i love you but I have to let you go. I love you, but for myself and my children and my safety, I've got to let you go. I love you, but I can't let you walk all over me. That's the strong kind of love that we need. That's the strong kind of love that will build bridges. That's the str strong kind of love that will chase demons away because when you can love somebody my definition of love when you can love somebody it changes their whole world it changes their perspective it changes their life my definition of love is the embracing of somebody whether you agree with them or not you Love doesn't mean you always agree. Love, can, love means, in my definition, that you can embrace somebody without agreeing with them. See, I don't need to agree with you. I don't need to understand you totally to love you. I just need to understand that you're a person. You're a child of God, and as a child of God, I love you. I may not like everything you do. I may not understand the way you live your life. I may not understand uh, um, all the all the aspects of you, but I can still love you in spite of that. And I think when we can get to that kind of love, it will force us to deal with all this other stuff. It'll force us to write our politicians to create laws that include everybody. But if we just do it because we're supposed to do it and without a heart of love, it'll be just like 
uh, seventy brass and tinkling cymbals. Um, that's the what the Bible says. If we don't have love, if we don't have the strong, never let you go, here for you in thick and thin kind of love. And um, the Lord began to say, tell them to love with abandon. He said, tell them to love with abandon. Because if you love with abandon, what I mean by loving with abandon is loving with an open heart, loving with no matter what you do, I'm here, no matter, you know, no matter who you are, I'm here. And I'm not talking about loving with stupidity. I'm talking, oh, I love him, so I'm going to let him beat me. No, that's loving with stupidity. What I'm, <laughs> what I mean by loving with abandon, which is, um, is... Loving in spite of themselves. And if a person is dangerous and you get away from them, doesn't mean you love them any less. It could actually mean that you are doing the best thing for them. Sometimes the best way to show somebody you love them is to put some distance between you and the person or let them figure out what they need to for themselves. Sometimes um, the worst thing you can do is to coddle the person. And sometimes uh, we put too much distance between us and people and we need to bring them close without fear. So ask the Lord today about the people in your life which which one you need to do. Do you need to bring them closer or do you need to um, n not cut them off but put distance between you guys, between you two. And he also said to me, uh, tell them not to take their loved ones in their life for granted. Sometimes, I know even with me, I take my loved ones for granted. I don't, I don't mean to, but sometimes I get so busy with my own life that I forget to even say I love you and I forget to be present in the moment. Uh, and this happens to us all. Um, a family member could be talking to me, but when they're talking to me, I'm on the computer, I'm doing something else, and I'm not really present in the moment. My body's here, um, I'm saying yes, but I'm not really present in the morning, in the moment. And the Lord said, says, the one of the best ways you can show love is to be present in the moment. Is to be present when you're talking with your family. Is to be present when you're at home with your family. Family. A lot of people do this. They're at home, but they're thinking about work. They're at church, but they're thinking about home. They're at school, but they're thinking about a church or their youth group. And the Lord said, the best way to show love to the people around you is to be present in the moment. Whatever moment you are in, whether you're at school, whether you're at work, whether you're at church, be present in that moment. I understand that it's not always possible. I understand that we always, we all have life stuff going on and we're trying to multitask but whenever possible be present in the moment don't go out to dinner with your family and your friends and when you're allowed to go out to dinner by the way um and be on your phone be 
present with your family. Be present with your friends. Be present with those around you. Whatever it is, uh, probably can usually can wait. And if and if it can't wait, don't make a and don't make a time to go out with your family and friends. Things happen. I don't. I know that. But usually, don't schedule. When you're with your family or your friends, be in the moment with them. Don't be looking down on, uh, at your phone uh, when you're when they're trying to talk to you and converse with you, especially if you don't live with them. Even if you do, be in the moment because moments are so precious. And once they're here and gone, that's it. You can't get the moment back. So treat every moment like a precious gem. Don't treat it fleeting. And I'm learning this for myself. So the Lord's saying to take every moment and treat it like a precious gem. And tell them you love them as often as possible. You see, um, I had, um, in 2017, my brother died. My brother passed away. And I always remember him saying, he always said when we, when we hung up the phone and whenever I saw him, I love you, and that's what I remember of him. So you never know when you'll get those, when those moments will be taken away. And although he's up in heaven with Jesus now, I always remember those moments when I saw him or when I spoke to him on the phone. He used to always say, I love you, and he used to say, I love you too. And now that he's gone, that's the moment, those are the moments I remember. And I smile because I remember that although he's not, he, he's not here anymore, he's with Jesus, that he always said he loved me. And it gave me the opportunity to say it back. So God bless you. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, my sermon. Tell your family and friends that you love them today. I hope this sermon blessed you. It certainly uh, blessed me preaching it. Take care.